Hey everybody. Morning, Bill, Everett, Nikki, Kimberly, my lovely wife, Francois, Ray, Nikki. It's for real. The soy allergy, it's 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 uh not easy to deal with either. Um when she says kryptonite, it literally is like kind of like kryptonite. Uh, Jason, Dan, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. How we doing? Did we find the bottom today? I'm thinking we got dang close. If we didn't do it today, um, we got dang close. So, anyway, there we go. Getting close, getting close. Getting close. All right, we have on tap today. It is 5 o'clock now. We have the end of Q3 coming up at the end of the week. Saturday, last day of the month. Then we have PCE coming out this week, Powell's favorite number. We have other things hitting news-wise. And after we get through a little market update, we will do at least 30 minutes of your request, as always. That's why we call it 30MA, 30 minutes of awesome. I'll do your requests until uh, basically I get done. That's kind of the way I've been rolling. Lately, it's been 60MA 60, 60 instead of 30MA. So, all right. Hey, everybody. Glad you're here. Yeah, I don't know about Carrie Underwood impression, but uh, you know, we don't want her to do the dead raccoon impression. So we try to keep soy out of everything. Uh, unfortunately, some companies don't even tell you when soy's and stuff. So uh, we found code words for for things. You know, vegetable protein that means soy. Um, yeah. So here we go. All right. All training involves a substantial risk of loss. Past performance does not necessarily indicate, it's not necessarily indicative of future results. I mean, just because I predicted all this correction and uh, even where we would turn doesn't mean that I'll ever get another thing right again. This presentation here tended to be informational, educational, fun, entertainment, not a recommendation to buy or sell anything, financial instrument or otherwise. And if you desire that personal financial advice, got to hire and consult a financial advisor as a fiduciary duty to take care of you. All right. Glad to have everybody. Good afternoon or evening, Craig, Ray. Um, as people keep reminding me, just because it's 5 o'clock here, and it's still like 1 o'clock-ish out Pacific time, you know. So I guess 2 o'clock maybe. And if you're in Hawaii, way early. If you're in uh, China, it's like 5 in the morning. So, all right, let's jump into it, shall we? Get started, go through where we're at. So, S&P, look at that. Right down in the zone. Right down there. Right at the bottom. I thought we might get a dip below the roadmap line. There it is. We can be done. Now, there is the potential and possibility that we go right on down to the 4237 area on S&P 500. Get the little extension. It's possible. Plausible. Possible and plausible. And wouldn't surprise me one bit. So potential to dip down there to that orange box right there. It's a, it's a potential. It's a potential. So remember, this can happen. Be prepared. But we can also do a dip and rip. We could dip a little bit further, and then we could go ripping. We could rip higher. Um, this morning, I was like, hey, it'd be good to see a 100-point day. I wasn't talking about a 100-point day down. Um, I was hoping to see a 100-point day up after we dipped, but we never got the rip. We only got the dip. Ended up 63 down. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's the that's where we wound up with today. The S5FI, going to book another day in the red, below 20, and I should uh, not do... It on this chart we should do it on this chart uh, stocks above the 50-day moving average they actually um this won't actually print for about there it goes there it goes i was gonna say it should print any moment now we're down to 13 13.7 percent of s p 500 stocks above their 50-day moving average can we go down to zero yeah we could go down to zero it's um we don't like we i mean we don't usually typically see moves down in that very low single digit area very often. We've had one back here in June of 22. We had one right here in September of 22. And we haven't seen that again. 
Well, right there, dipping down to 13. That is below the low we saw on this correction right here back in March. So is this correction worse than what we saw in March at this point? Yeah, kind of is. Is it worse than what we saw in December? Yeah, kind of is. December didn't even take us below the 20. March did. This one did too. So um, if it feels like everything's freaking down, yeah, everything's freaking down. 70, what was that? 80, 87% of everything is freaking down on the S&P 500. So um, I can cover Apple here in a few minutes. We'll, we'll get there. Just give me a minute cover the the highlights and then we'll we'll circle back circle back around all right we usually hit the futures just kind of hit the highlights here es there's a lot of stuff drawn on this chart i may have to clear it up a little bit let's clean this up so we can see we can actually even see candles there were a lot of twists and turns going on here so at this point we didn't do that we just dropped on down right to the roadmap line now look es just fully tested the roadmap line today S&P SPX was a little bit below on the close. Uh, right there, a little bit below, but ES came in right on the money. Right on the money, honey. That was beautiful. We actually basically did the gap fill right there. I was speculating this morning that we may do the gap fill. Look at that. You see those little candles sticking up just above? We basically did the gap fill. I thought we might see that. I was kind of speculating on that this morning during the morning monster that we may touch down and do a gap fill. Right there it was. We did it. We did the thing. Did the thing I was expecting. So there we go. That This move can be done. We kind of wrapped it up. Put a bow on it. Filled that gap. It only took, uh, you know, I speculated on the gap fill back in June. It only took us till September, the end of September, to do it. We eventually got there, took a roundabout's way of getting there. We went up. Now, a few people a little bit concerned about the fact this looks a little bit like a head and shoulders. Eh, I mean, yeah, kind of does, kind of doesn't. Could we go on down further? We could. I mean, the market can do anything it wants, right? It's just people. People do whatever they want. But right here we are. Potential head and shoulders. We kind of filled that out. Um, usually you want to see your shoulders kind of balanced and you don't want to see a bunch of candles going outside of the pattern. So this makes it kind of a mucked up pattern a little bit. If this were to play out, if indeed, how far does that put us down? Back down to the low 4,000 area. Or mid, you know, fourth that, well, four. Yeah, 4,060 in you know, the 4,000 area, which, funny enough, right there, that box, that support resistance zone from back there all the way in May. Interestingly enough, could it go down there? Could. All right. Just wanted you to, just want to throw that out there as possible potential. Lots of support resistance below there, and we held, we held that so far. Yeah, that. That orange box, I do kind of expect to hold on the ES. That's S&P 500 futures, if you're unfamiliar. Why futures? Because they trade 24 seven. Like these, these. well, they close from five to 6 p.m. Eastern time, but they'll be back open at 6 p.m. and go keep on going right on till tomorrow um, at 5 p.m. tomorrow. And then they'll close again for an hour. And then they close at 5 p.m. on Friday Eastern and then don't open again till 6 p.m. on Sunday. So there you go. In Q, still lagging a little bit. Could we get another spike down? Yeah. This morning, I was speculating on Microsoft that we would see it touch the roadmap line. It did indeed do. It pretty much came all the way to the bottom and then closed up in the middle. That was beautiful. That was it. That's all I needed. Correction can be done. I was uh, kind of expecting Microsoft and Apple to hit their respective roadmap lines. Microsoft did it. Apple did it on the first try. Microsoft did it on this try. Could we go a little deeper? Yeah, we could. Could we be done? Yeah, we could. Um, Apple, before we even get to requests, Apple right there, it's in that consolidation box. 
probably should pull it down just a hair more to grab the tails. We stopped in that consolidation box. Now, if it were to break below this consolidation box, below about 170, probably heading on down here, 164, possibly down to 160 area right there. That target area, entirely possible. Now, if we can hold this box where we are right now, this consolidation we did back here in May, we hold that, turn higher, do a higher high, you know, break above this, you know, you see how we topped here, topped here, kind of rejected it there, took a diversion up, hit the 618, back down, resistance, resistance, couldn't even muster. So this is kind of a key flip point right here. It's a little bit of a zone. And then this will be a key key resistance up here also. So we're going to have to beat that most aggressively, so back above 180. All right, then we've got to get above this one. So back above 190. If we do all that, then at this point, this was a lower low. Lower low right there, just marginal, not much, just, just a dot. Not a lot, just a dot. But that puts us on a path to 205, possibly 214, possibly even up here to 220. So there we go. It's kind of the setup for Apple. Doesn't look great today. Some people are like, oh gosh, oh. I saw it in the chat, but um, there's nothing really broken. It's it, it's like a nothing burger for me. We're actually, re, you know, post market up a little bit, you know, up 20, 24 cents. Not bad. I mean, it's certainly not back above 180 yet, but um, don't be surprised by the turn. All right. Mainstream media got really bearish today. I saw so many bearish articles. When everybody starts tipping super bearish, the bottom is getting close. All right. Russell, small caps. Oh, come on. We could have we could have finished this up. Come on. That's got to that's that's so close. This see how this head and shoulders very proportional. That shoulder and that shoulder pretty close to the same size. All the candles kind of inside the head and shoulders. Very close. That one could come up short. Um, that was an orange box that I had on there from way back over here on before we went up and back down. Hold, kind of holding the bottom of that box. That was right in the target zone. Head and shoulders target would be at the bottom of the target zone. But we got there. I mean, for me drawing that thing on there, however long ago it was, took a little longer than I thought, but uh, we got there. I'm, Sometimes I get lucky on where I put the targets. Sometimes. I don't really move them around either. So you can go back and see when I drew that on there. And we got there. Oil still being a little... Mm, came up right just to the bottom of the targets. We could poke up in there further. Or we could retrace down to this right here. It's going to be support. We tagged it down here before. Came up here. You know, that was after we tagged this. I drew that one. We tagged it. We ran up here. And I drew this one down here. Well, we might go down there and tag it. It might be a little, little longer like that. So it would not surprise me one bit to come down here and tag this again. All right, that's oil for you. Is there more upside? There could be, but we've got a significant resistance above us. And it comes from all the way back here. We made this high, this high, this high. There's a lot of uh, supply, a lot of sellers in that area, right up there between 94 and 98 on oil. We found them before, we can find them again. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Sorry I'm new, can somebody tell me if we get an exit alert for today's XSP card spread when both cases are issued? Um, this is the wrong place to ask a question like that. Discord is where I throw stuff and there's no exit alerts on if you're talking about the green light income alerts the trade closes itself out there's no exit alert um i don't tell you when to get out the market tells you when to get out if you're looking for a roll or something like that then all that information is in discord uh, we big bunch of chat we had a bunch of chat about green light income alerts today so talked about it quite a bit today more than any other day i think we've ever talked about it so Gasoline here. Well, almost to the bottom of the arrow. Right there. Not far to go. 
uh, probably support around that 235 area down there. And I'm not seeing that at the pumps. Sorry to say. Can we can we get some relief at the pumps? I mean, come on. This is wholesale gasoline. Doesn't include taxes. Um, I haven't seen that kind of move on... I mean, gas prices here went did this, and they haven't budged. I mean, they, they've been sitting up here. They haven't done this retrace that we're seeing in the futures. So this is interesting and curious. And also... That move right there looks corrective, which would set us up for a move on down possibly to 232 right there. Corresponds with the 618 of that move up. Hmm, interesting. Probably some confluence right down in this zone right here. Wouldn't surprise me one bit to go right down in there. Heating oil, diesel. Even diesel's kind of rolling over. Wouldn't surprise me to see a bigger retrace there. That could all correspond with a retrace on oil. So, natural gas continuing not to play. Just sideways in a tight range. Been, I mean, it set the range back in February and hadn't really budged since. Just not. I think it sucked in so much money. You know, so much money got sucked in during this run. And they crushed everybody. And... Everybody keeps pumping money in, and then it's it's a battle of the shorts. Like people are trying to rip pe other people, and just it's hard to make any money when it just goes sideways. GC broke out of the bottom today. Not that's no bueno, no bueno for going higher. Um, I brought something. I need to pull it up. That reminds me, I was gonna show this chart off on gold. Talked about it earlier. Look at this. Big colorful chart. Look at this. Isn't this interesting? This is the last 200 years global production of gold. 2022 estimated um, total tonnage. End of year. 3,100 tons. That's metric tons, so that's 3,100 kilograms. Yeah, 1,000 kilograms, whatever, whatever. I think a metric ton is 1,000 kilograms, so it's 2,200 pounds, roughly. So it's a little more than actual U.S. tons that we're all familiar with. Or, And um, there you go. Right there. That means that to just to maintain the price of gold, the world has to buy 3,100 metric tons of gold just to keep prices the same. We have to absorb that. Now, to increase the price, that means we have to have more demand than the production. That's a huge production number. Now, Bitcoin, on the other hand, is going the other way. Um, as, as time goes on, Bitcoin it, production is declining and it's built into the code. And uh, so you've got increasing supply. And, you know, we did have a peak right back here in, in, in 2019. We kind of peaked. But 3,100 tons hitting the market. I mean, that's, that's a lot of gold that's got to get absorbed just to maintain the prices. Now, this may be why a price is not uh, appreciating as much as um, it seems like it should. I mean, look at that production. And China coming out is the number one producer. And Russia right behind them. Australia behind them. Then Canada, the US, Mexico, Kazakhstan, South Africa used to be the big producer. They kind of peaked in 1970 with 1,000 tons produced right back here. And they've kind of been tapering off. Only 110 tons this past year. Uh, we've got 1,000 tons, or 100 tons in Peru, 100 tons in Uzbekistan. Uh, get my... Get my southern twang to pronounce that weird word. And 90 tons in Ghana, 70 tons in Indonesia, then 17 other countries combined together to produce another 1,030 tons for the rest of the rest of it. Um, that's an amazing amount of gold when you think about it. 
All right, we're not even talking ounces. We're talking about metric tons, you know, and a metric ton being a thousand kilograms. So quite a bit of gold. And that's just to maintain, we have to absorb 3,100 tons just to maintain the price. And he said, um, grams of gold in a metric. Well, not grams of gold. We want ounces of gold. Ounces of gold. So we can think about it in terms of price. Ounces of gold in a metric ton. Right there. You're talking about 35,274 per ton. All right. Uh, thanks, Rodney, for sending me a message. I appreciate that, whoever you are. All right. So 3,100 tons times 35,274. That's 109,349,400 ounces of gold. All right. Now at, what are we at? 1900, 1800? I don't remember what it was today. 1990, 1919 times 1919. $209 billion has to flow into gold just to maintain the price. 209, basically $210 billion at the current price. So just the production of gold absorbs $210 billion last year and this year. You know, just in, you know, using today's future price. So why is gold not blasting off to the moon? Maybe it has something to do with the fact it has to absorb $210 billion and then have more demand just to go higher from there. So there you go. And silver, same sort of situation. A lot lower prices, but um, yeah, about 17 to 1. When you mine an ounce of gold, you basically mine like 17 ounces of silver. And we don't see that so much on like Gold Rush Alaska, but you know, that's the general availability in the, in the Earth's crust. Copper continuing to suck it up, and we may see this break down. We get lower than this price right here, probably heading on down. So far, this has been a pretty bearish pattern. Lots of people calling for this epic bull run in commodities. Looking like we might see an epic bearish move in copper. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Now, crypto, touch on Bitcoin really quickly. And then we can start taking some official gold reserves for each 38,000 tons in Q2 2023, suppressing the previous record set in 1965. Yeah. I mean... Those go, yeah, they're, you know, Federal Reserve is buying gold, but still, it's like, um, is it really creating demand, though? I mean, it's a lot of money they got to soak up just to keep the prices the same, like I keep saying. So, anyway, Bitcoin just chugging sideways. We need a catalyst. We've got some catalysts on the calendar. I've been talking about that. Um, talked about it in the Crypto Power Place update for the week. And, but right now, if we just look at the pattern, it's a lower high. It's a bearish pattern. We're doing a potential little 618 retrace right there. If we actually spike down and touch it, we could blast off. It could be, could take us out higher. We, we want to see it hold this general area right here around 25, possibly 25.9 up, you know, in this area, then break back out above 26.6. That would probably take us on up higher. The move that we basically have set up right now would be a move up into this 29,000 area right up here. If that thing breaks out back above this level, right around that, right there. If we break above that, potentially going up here. If we don't break above that, potentially coming down here. That move would be potentially down to here. There you go. There's a the potential pass on Bitcoin. Laid out in all the glory. Now, there is a Bitcoin profit window that opened up today that uh, 
I'm kind of betting on a long. Um, kind of betting on a positive move here. So there we go. All right. Moving on. I guess it's time for requests. Unless there's something else that you want me to hit on, some other futures, some other anything, I guess you make the request. Otherwise, I'll take some some requests. So looking up there, I see Amazon. Roadmap line. What does it do after that? We'll see. But roadmap line. The retrace, probably be like that. Take it out to 150, 160. And downside roadmap line, can't hold that. We could come back and test this high from back here. The bottom of the box, once again, right back over there. Could go back down there, could. Do I expect it? Not really. Not really. All right. Uh, mm, 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 mm. AMD. AMD is below 96. What's the, what does it look like? No. Can anybody decipher the chart that I have up there? What it looks like? Target would be down here, 75 to 80. We got below, not looking good. Could it save it? It could. 96 was kind of my line in the sand. I mean, 95, 88, that's pretty dang close. That's 12 cents off of 96. I certainly wouldn't touch it long until we're back above that downtrend. If if it's going to say, save it right here, odds are we're on a path down here at this point. Am I trading for that? Nope. Is it high probability? I wouldn't call it high probability. Um, is anything high probability at the moment? Nope. It's an unclear, mucked up chart. It had a bullish setup. It failed to get continuation, failed to break out. Now it's doing a more bearish thing. Can it get that? Yeah, sure as blank can. I mean, if you got other doubt, I mean, look at this. This one, we've been chasing this one all the way down. 54 would be my next target and possibly as low as 45. I mean, can they go down? Yeah, and despite people saying that it should be a bullish breakout, it can just keep on chugging down and PayPal may eventually get down here and the path that's on right now, this may be out here sometime in mid 2024 before we find a bottom around 45. Can it go up? I mean, it can take diversions, whatever. PayPal's on a path down and just like square. I mean, right down there, almost to the target. I mean, that was pretty freaking close. Had that target on there for a little while, 40. We may see it dip on down in there. It's really close. All right. So just warning you, like things can be bearish, even though it seems like they should be bullish. All right. AMD, kind of one of those things that uh, even though it seems like it should be bullish now, it may do the bearish thing. Uh, that way four could go, could go a little deeper. Just doesn't. It's, it's just a little big right now. 96 was kind of my line in the sand. So it's, it's looking rough. Looking rough. All right. You are, you are in J. I'm not sure I know that one. Junior Uranium. Yeah. Doesn't have enough to, to chart it. So it must be a new ETF this year. Can't really do anything with that. Sorry, doesn't have enough information to do anything. Um, one I could do information with is URA. And that one, I've got a target up here at 40. You know, the conservative target is 35, but I've been pretty optimistic on hitting 40 for, gosh, a long time. It's been a while. I have shares this, I have calls, sold at 40, out to whenever. I just keep selling upside calls at 35 and 40 against the shares. I've been holding on to that for a while. Just keep coming out here a few months. Hey, if it's 35 cent call, 
Sell the 35 cent call. 35 bucks, cha-ching, per 100 shares. Just keep holding on to it. It's eventually going to pop up there, and I may raise the target. All right. DKNG. Draft Kings. Hey, it's football time. It's, you know, back to foosball time. Sports, my favorite show. Not really. I don't watch eSports ball. Um, as Kimberly, I think, talked about in the chat there a minute ago. I keep track of stocks and companies. Um, like other people watch sports and keep track of sports and who does does what and all that. Um, all that mental capacity in my brain is filled up with stocks and, and CEOs and companies and technologies and stuff like that. So try to talk to me about sports. I'm probably not your guy. But DraftKings, I mean, potential to wrap this up. There's a little correction here. Potentially come down here. Find a little support in that zone. Once we do, possibly 37, possibly 40. Going to the moon. Doubt it. Could make a new higher high there, though, for the year. Still got lots of junk to work through to get back to those all-time high prices. Seems to be a lot of resistance to getting approval to operate in other states. You know, Tennessee jumped on the bandwagon. And was it 12 other states? But long way from getting mass approval on DraftKings. So, all right. I'm glad y'all enjoyed the uh, chat on gold. Lots of jokes on there about crowns and all sorts of stuff. Crowns. Crown. Crown. Crowns. Uh, Kimberly makes fun of the way I said crowns. Because uh, crowns I draw with and crowns you wear on your head are the same for me. I say it the same way. Anyway, um, SMCI probably coming back to the roadmap line. Can it break out of, can it just pop off of this box? Sure. Sure can. Do I expect it to go a little deeper? Yeah, I kind of do. Um, back to the bottom of the box and the roadmap line. I kind of speculated that maybe they would come together right out here. It would not surprise me. Not one bit to see that dip and touch. So there you go. And NVIDIA to go along with that would not surprise me one single bit to see that drop right back to the roadmap line. So far, we're kind of holding the lows. That, um, this is kind of a flip point and I've actually got an alert. You can see it right there at 4, 404. <laughs> 404. That's a website error. 404 page not found. Um, right there. That's kind of the flip point at this point. That was resistance on the way up. Support, support, support. If we break that, probably coming down to the roadmap line. As long as we hold above it, we could go higher. Despite how unlikely that seems at this point, mostly due to the ridiculous price to sales ratio. You know, I mean, look at this. Look at the valuation. One trillion dollar company, right? One trillion dollars. Uh, anybody name some other one trillion dollar companies? Like, um, I don't know. We got Apple, right? Apple's a multi trillion dollar company, right? Two point six eight. Price to sales seven. Um, uh, let's see, Microsoft, right? Another one. 2.3, 11. Uh, I don't know where Google is at these at this moment. I think it's close. Yeah, 1.6, 5.8. Price to sales ratio. Can't fake sales, all right? Can't fake sales. You can fake earnings. You can't fake sales. And that's just an example. All right. Amazon, I don't, are we still above a trillion? Can't remember. Yeah, 1.2, 2.55 on your price to sales. So the standout here to me, NVIDIA, it has a dangerous price to sales ratio. You might be like, NVIDIA is growing. JT, you don't understand. 
Well, that's not exactly what the price of sales is showing, and it's not exactly what we're seeing over here on net income. Now, this year, this year's different? Sure, maybe. I mean, estimating 54 billion, coming off of 26 billion last year, but that's just a double. That's not like four times more. Be careful. I can't warn you enough. Anything above 20 is like a danger zone. You know, this thing historically hangs out right at 20. 14, 19, 21, 18, 19. 32, danger zone. Be careful. Grew too, this went too high too fast, all right? Wouldn't surprise me one bit if we come back to Earth a bit. I think I've said that 900 times now. Burl. Looks like a dumpster fire. Should we do it? Sledge it in here. This looks like a dumpster fire. That's below the 786. What does that set us up for? First move down, second retrace, second. Oh man. Right there, that's the target. Right down there. Could go as low as 72, but probably find a little support in that $97 area. Yeah, it could find support at the prior low, but um, looking pretty rough, looking pretty rough. There you go, that's Burl. Would I bet on it turn around here? Not really. No sure bet from right here for a long. Hope you're short, Beth. I think that was Beth. Por favor, CEG. Hablo un poquito espanol. Un poquito. CEG looks like. That's it. 112. Would I bet on 129? Not before a pullback. Well, let me get that right to the. Yeah, still 113. 112, 113, right there. We're, we're there. I mean, that's these zones are kind of fuzzy like this. Sometimes they hit a little short. Sometimes they hit a little, like, everybody can draw the freaking things on the chart. So sometimes they come up short. Sometimes they go a little extra. It just depends on what people are positioned. That's why I trade them as a fuzzy zone. Conservatively, I would expect that to be done. If we break back below... Probably this, where this consolidated right here. We're probably heading down to the roadmap line. At least back to the $97 area. This thing may come up just a little more and kind of meet that. And we could see a big, fast, swift retrace. Could happen on earnings. Just be careful. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Veil. Sorry, I can't pay attention to the chat and do the talking. So, um, big long comments. I have a little trouble with. All right. Bail kind of chopping. That's bearish. Lower, lower, lower high. Lower low, lower low. Probably going to make a lower low. Target already on here. Nine. Like we talked about, copper. Is not very bullish. Gold, not very bullish. Silver, not very bullish. Other metals, platinum. Uh, do I even have platinum on here at the moment? No, I don't see it. Unless it's down here. There it is. There's platinum and palladium. Palladium, that's pretty bearish. Platinum, that's pretty bearish. All the metals looking pretty bearish. Um, certainly doesn't support a commodity super cycle. I think that narrative is full of bull chart. Um, yeah. Now be careful on Veil. Looks kind of bearish. S Bucks. Well, it got the target. If it can't hold this, it's probably coming on down here. Next target down. If we get start getting below that. Like, 
I keep talking about it. We took a roundabout's way of getting there, but it, we got there. If we can hold support here, we can go higher, but um, we could go a little lower, down to about 86. Get below 86 to 78. Just jumping down the fib ladder. All right. That's Starbucks. C-E-I-X. Into the energy stuff. Yeah, that's topping out at 97. Wouldn't expect a whole lot more right now. Could it go to 116? Sure. Is it kind of likely to retrace? Kind of. Um, watch out. If we get we get oil retracing, it's going to take a bunch of these down with it. Um, look at some other ones like XOM. Kind of topping out there. ELO has been really strong. It's kind of topping out. Failing to break out. Um, let's see. PSX. Yeah, hitting the 1618. Been really strong, but potentially rolling over. So, OXY hadn't been able to get off the mat. Uh, too many people betting on Warren Buffett. And too many people shorting that. Shorting Warren, Warren Buffett. You know, Warren Buffett's going to stay solvent longer than uh, every time this thing dips down in this 56 area, he's buying more. Um, just accumulating, accumulating. So, uh, he's in it for the long game. Maybe a longer game than he's going to be around. So far, that's kind of bearish, though. It may result in a dip down to 52. Buffett's been a buyer at holding the floor at 56. He could let it get away at 52. Just be careful. All right. Meta. Yeah, this is one that's holding up really well. Let's zoom in and look at this. So the market's been in this giant correction, right? What's Meta been doing? Not, not anything. I'd say not shiz, you know, not shiz. Hadn't been doing anything. Just sitting there. Um, my Google got it, finally got a little retrace, but Meta just been parked. Opportunity for it to outperform. Netflix, back to the roadmap line. Actually dipped a little below, not the, not the best pattern. But Meta, not all those. It used to be the Fang and you know the F and Fang. Now, now it's uh more like Mang, I guess. Mang, -yang 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 -yang. however you want. To, it's like Meta, Amazon, Al Alphabet, um, whatever. Is there even a G anymore? Yeah. Ma, <laughs> Ma <laughs> I don't know. M A N A <laughs> Mana. Uh, Hard to call it Fang anymore, but holding up really well. And I was kind of speculating that if we held this right here, break back above like 305. I don't even is my alert in there. Yeah, my alert's right there. 305.50. We break back above 305.50, probably going to 324. Bunch of bunch of stuff drawn on this chart. There's another alert right there at 313. Confirmation of breaking above that high. Uh, I'll, I'll probably add a position, uh, even if it's just a few shares at 305. We'll break back above that. Pretty positive on that. Tesla? Where's Rongamer? Rongamer's skipping out on us today. Tesla held up really well compared to NASDAQ and S&P plummeting out. There is a Cybertruck delivery imminent. Probably going to deliver to workers first. Then some customers, some of the big name customers, you know, famous people. And then somewhere way on down the list, we'll get to JT and his reservation he's had since 2019. Um, I've reserved a, a Silverado EV since then too. And my Silverado EV is like scheduled for 2025. So looks like I might get a Cybertruck way before I get a Silverado. We'll see what happens. It's kind of a race. Like who can make a truck first? We'll see. Held up really well, though. We may see Cybertruck delivery announcement any day now. This could create a pop. So watch this. I do kind of expect a visit of the roadmap line. We may see it flush really quickly, find support, and turn around. But, 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 the big but, biggest but there is, this held the 618 retrace. That can be ultra bullish right there. We break back above 
250 six ish back up back above this big red candle back above that and 250 oh, i'm gonna set my alert at 257 we break above that it's probably game on for the target up here around 320 to 350 and if you know me at all 350 has kind of been the i think that's gonna be the resistance for a while could we go on up to 400 could not very likely at this point so right there may fart around in here may pop and then uh Rongamer seems to be the opinion that we're going to get a drop on earnings uh, consistent with uh every other time he says as he says uh, every time elon opens his mouth the stock drops so i'll talk more about that as we get closer to the earnings coming up potentially october 18th all right 78 don't know of a stock amd dive yeah it might roku well, that's right in the target zone. I don't remember when I drew that. Probably some point up here. Uh, a week ago? Two weeks ago? Yeah, it's probably two weeks ago. <laughs> 30 minutes awesome <laughs> on the 12th. Um, bingo, bango, right there to it. Can it go deeper? Yeah, sure is. Sure as it can. You can come down here to 61. Be careful. Usually we see a bounce back up to retest the 100 before we go on down. Doesn't always happen. It's just kind of the pattern that tends to work out. All right, I-O-N-Q. Back to the roadmap line. Target 12-ish. Right there. That one's easy. CRM. Oh, it's at the roadmap line. And if it does an echo of that first move down, echoes off of this resistance, that would be right down here around 190, 185 to 193. Doesn't have far to go to get there either. Another seven bucks, eight bucks, well, nine bucks. Mm -mm -mm. Did Google A, B, and B has just kind of been drifting lower, holding that flip point. It was resistance, 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 pop. Came right back to it. We hold there and go. It'd be positive. It may dip on back to the roadmap line. Hold a higher low. Either of those entirely possible. Still bullish. Um, I'm still bullish. Still looking for the higher prices. 163, 173 are the reasonable price targets. And the bigger picture, possibly up to 230. But it may take us out into some time next year. Mara. Just just kind of looking crappy um yeah barely holding on to that prior consolidation zone dipping a little below today not the best may we go visit revisit 650 it may it may get a temporary reprieve like we did right back here yeah retrace 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 maybe i have to see um looks like it's just kind of going with the going with the market today risk off risk on market was risk off Mara getting hit right along with everything else bitcoin didn't really participate so this is short sellers more than anything all righty mm -mm -mm. i did Mora did a spot. And retrace to the roadmap line and just parked in the box. Can't break out, can't break down. Parked in the box. Despite the big flush in the market, holding up pretty well. If we can hold that right there and turn back higher. I've actually got an alert there. That, do I? No, there's no alert. I thought I had an alert there, but I don't. I'm probably going to put one right here. I did liquidate my position on spot right there. That day I was regretting it. This day I'm not. Made the decision. We came up. Failed to break higher. I liquidated. That was in the market. Um, when the S&P failed to make the higher high, I liquidated. I was debating my decision that day. Glad I did it this day. We may retrace to the roadmap line. If we get below that, in fact, I'm gonna 
I got my alert right there at the right there now at 149.70. We break below that. I'll look to pick back up my position, possibly um, set more alerts to for the reversal setup. At this point, I'm off of there. 195, 213 are the potential upsides, but we've got some stuff to work through. We may, like I said, we may revisit that roadmap line. So I'm off of that for right now. Did uh, Microsoft, MSTR, all these Bitcoin miners and holders just kind of in line. MSTR. Back to the daily. MSTR is going to be sympathetic to Bitcoin. We're in the box. We're in the consolidation. Can we hold it and turn higher? Or are we going to drop on out? If Bitcoin drops further, MSTR is going to drop further. Riot's going to drop further. Mara is going to drop further. I have a whole list of crypto power plays stocks. It's like all these are going to drop. With Bitcoin, Mara, Hut, Riot, Hive, G. Um, let me expand that over. GBTC, BTBT, MSTR, Hood. You're like Hood, yeah, Hood. Hood holds as much Bitcoin as MSTR. Surprise, surprise. BITO, Coin, PayPal, Square. Nvidia is probably going to go down, even on that kind of Bitcoin dropping. AMD, SMH, SOXL, WGMI, MAXI, BTF, BITQ. CLSK, GREE, BKKT, all these. Even Visa has a significant crypto holding. If you didn't even know that, surprise. There you go. When Bitcoin suffers, all these things are going to suffer. All right. There you go. So where's it going to go? Probably not. I mean, it's not going to defy Bitcoin. It's just not. Like MSTR, just watch the Bitcoin chart. Bitcoin's not moving. You can almost guarantee that any of those stocks are not moving. It's just the way it is, all right? All right. Mm -hmm. CCL, Carnival Cruise Lines, retrace the roadmap line. Can it hold it? Looks like it's a little below so far, but held up really well today, despite the market being super bearish. So showing a little strength. It's not a great sign of strength, but showing a little strength. This one could pop off and run significantly higher got resistance up here and honestly it would look better if this one actually dropped back down to 11 put that 618 back down a little further but right now got the resistance right there potential to go higher 21 23 we'll see what happens um no clear path right now there's no I wouldn't bet on it going long. I wouldn't bet on further downside. There's unclear. It's unclear. Like there's no clear path forward on Carnival right now. Um, there's just not. Um, no high probability setup. Other people may disagree, but um, what does it take for 20 times sales on NVIDIA? Yeah, like and do the math. It's not too hard. You got the, the estimated sales on NVIDIA. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Want to know what it takes? Let's go back over here. I mean, right now, 32. So you're going to lose just rough. We're going to lose 30%, 33%, really. It's going to take a 33% cut to get a price to sales back to 20. 33% cut from where we are. I'll pull this down. Put it there. Go 33, takes us roughly to 276. Oh, look, there's a giant target drawn there. Imagine that. I kind of expected us to get like a 30% off the top. Take us back, you know, it's like 151 points down off the top. Pretty significant. That would take us back to about 350. Yeah, just right in, right in line with where the roadmap line is. So there you go. All righty. You. Unity. 
Market not too fond of their new plan. Um, new plan to try to monetize developers. Looks like we're going to go back and visit 26. Yep. That kind of looks like a head and shoulders too. Let's see. That was a big head. Shoulders kind of balanced. I don't really like that extra diversion there. Head's a little crazier than I drew it even. So that could take us on down to 22. On Unity. Not bueno. No bueno. TSM. Downside, please. And we're below the roadmap line. I would watch for support right there. Or there. That looks like a leading diagonal. Could. And there's support. Could dip a little lower. The one below that is right here. Kind of expect it to turn up right in this area. I would expect it. And that's a bullish pattern. We turn up here and go back above the roadmap line. All right. PayPal gave that target downside ETSY. E T S Y S C is a flaming dumpster fire heading down to forty four. Right there. Dumpster fire. Sure. Yeah, so that one gonna lose like thirty percent. More than likely, that's where we're headed. Can do it quickly, too. Don't get caught off guard. All right. MCD. I'm behind on the chat. I'll get there. Oh. Down to that resistance. Are we going to do the bigger retrace? Maybe. Golly. This one could really retrace. Holy guacamole. You're not going to like this. Potential to come back there. We start getting below that. Watch out for that. Ouch. Be careful on McDonald's. Did Roku. Mm -mm -mm. Pretty sure. Yeah. Did Roku. SIL. Looks like a flaming pile of garbage. Back to the lows. Right there. That's support. We get below that. That's going to be a bummer. That was kind of a potentially bullish type setup. It's very sloppy. I guess a corrective bullish. I don't know. Yeah, we get we get below and we get down in this box. It's kind of tipping the odds. We're going to go lower load, possibly 18 on SL Hack. Coming back to the roadmap line. I thought we would go a little higher. We did not. We kind of failed that. Back to the roadmap line. We just, we didn't do it. Start from up here. We just started from where we were and went back. Roadmap line is the support at this point. And 
And B, B. God, that looks sideways. It's just sideways, gnarly nothing. Doesn't look, it's been, been sideways since 20, I mean, for, since last summer. Not even this summer, like last summer for a year plus now. Just took a little diversion down, took a little, tried to break up, tried to break up, right back down. It's got roughly, you know, the support's roughly hanging in here. Right around 13, probably coming back in that zone. The resistance up here around 19, and just expect more chop. And there's the market open again. So, elf. It's okay, diversion back down to the roadmap line. I'm still long. And that has the potential to go much higher at this point. 150, 160, the upside. The most aggressive, that's, that's a hard one because it's right in the resistance. Right there, back above that would be the most aggressive, but that's right in the resistance there. Uh, 125, you need to look for something, uh, some other different entry criteria. Unless you want to wait for it to pop back above 130 and target 150 to 160. BTBT, BTBT, just with Bitcoin. I mean, it's hanging in here really well. That's didn't get the big flush like Mara. Just hanging in that zone right around that 618. I didn't even have to draw it. It's right already over there, hanging in there. We break back above the roadmap line. It's game on. Much higher prices. Um, I have a few contracts. Like, 200 CBOE yeah next upside targets probably 160 then potentially a bigger retrace look at consolidation at the 100 retrace back break up stall out kind of retest reach for it then watch out for it to retrace back down here back to 139 ish maybe retest this consolidation at cboe x nice pop but be careful still below still way below this high as we talked about materials not looking particularly bullish at the moment could see a retrace Still stuck in that zone where we can retrace and go a little lower. It's kind of just kind of meh. All right, CEIX already did that one, pretty sure. Yep. Um, AVGO. Back to the roadmap line. That's the target. Almost there. Price you want to know seven sixty nine. Um, I looks pretty horrible. I don't know why you even touch that. Don't mess with that. FNGU is back to the roadmap line. Can it hold? We'll see. I don't know. Looks like it failed. The head and shoulders that would take it down to potentially one thirty two, right there. Oh. Looks pretty horrible. How low can she go? My oh man, Goose keeps buying this. He's out flying airplanes right now. Um, 48. If you didn't know, real estate having a little trouble. So be careful. ARE. Oh, look at that. Freaking yeah. I didn't hold on to this. I couldn't hold on to it. I I started doubting myself, but look at that. Beautiful. Did anybody hold on to that? Anybody? Anybody, anybody. Look at that. That was beautiful. Oh man. 
Should have held on to it. I had a crap ton of puts on that thing. Made like 100 bucks. Beautiful. All right. Uh, cost. Costco. Yeah, I've been kind of bearish on this, but I actually kind of broke out trying to make higher highs. It's kind of stuck at this resistance. It's not really doing anything. It's been doing nothing super interesting for a while. I kind of expected it, you know, to break down. It didn't break down. Didn't do it, but it didn't break up either. It's just been doing nothing. Kind of finished that wedge pattern and then it didn't do, like, usually we get some kind of epic pop or drop, but it didn't do anything. That's just kind of a bummer. Like, it's, there's, it's, it's got a, nothing to do but wait for it to figure it out now. Um, could get up to 666, 737, but, um, yeah. Not. There's just nothing. I mean, has earnings. What today? When was that earnings? Earnings was today. Yeah. It's like little baby pop, but just nothing. Just a big ball of nothing. Now post market down. Yeah. There we go. Dropping. May it gets below the roadmap line, we may we may drop out. I mean, if it does decide to finally do the thing I was expecting, we could go down to three ten or three thirty somewhere down here. It's kind of the target zone down here. Ah. There we go. All right, I already did Netflix. Now, for those of you that are still left. My team wanted me to share a link. If you have interesting, if if you have interesting, duh. if you have interest in finding out more about all the things I do, like if you want full access, I got a brand new strategy, an income strategy coming up on Bitcoin. If you want to find out more about that, more about all the things, and have lifetime access to everything I do. Here's a link. I'm going to throw it in the chat right there. JeffreyTrader.com slash inquire. You can inquire and see if uh, it's an application process. It's not just like a go to the form and fill out the pay the fee. No, this is a application process. I only accept you if uh, you're right for the team. It's a teamwork. Make the dream work. You get access to all the experimental stuff. I got some AI stuff. I got some crypto stuff. I got some all sorts of interesting things in the works. If you want to be a part, right there it is. If you think you want to be a part. Otherwise, I'll see you again in the morning. Be back with you for Morning Monster. And we'll find out what's popping and what's dropping. And you know, we have uh, some calendar events coming up this week. We have PCE coming up later in the week. We have not a lot tomorrow. Core Durable Goods. We've got Final GDP on Thursday. And we've got PCE, Powell's favorite number, coming up on Friday. Before the market opens. Market moving stuff. Coming up later in the week. So there you go. Watch out for it. It's coming down the pipe. Be careful. Be careful. All right. I think this number may come in hot. Even though it seems like the consumer is wounded. This number may come in hot. Personal consumer expenditures. Right there. Have a great day everybody. I'll see you in the morning.